Hey friends, it's been a long time since we posted on this channel. It's been a crazy year and it just didn't allow time for me to think about posting a video on this channel. I tried, actually, I tried. I filmed an update video for y'all back in, what was that, May or June? But never got around to editing that and posting it. And now that that video is way out of date. If you want to know some of the things that have happened in 2023, check out this link below to our action webpage where our latest newsletters uh, get posted. So we're back finally. <laughs> As the title suggests, this is part two of uh, the part one love story that God has written for us. So if you maybe haven't seen part one yet, or if you maybe need to rewatch it, this would be a good chance before continue watching this one. It's up here somewhere or even down below. <laughs> We're so glad that you came back to watch another video on this channel, uh, even though it has been so long. So after finally opening up to her, as I mentioned in the previous video, we took a couple of months uh, to pray about the direction of our relationship. For example, Agnes is older than me and she's from Germany and I'm from Canada. Are these things going to be a problem for us? During these two months, we continued to hang out and get to know each other more intentionally. We celebrated our first Christmas together and I celebrated my first New Year's Eve here in the Philippines together with Agnes and some of uh, some Filipino friends. The day after New Year's Eve, on the first day of the new year in 2020, Jason did something that was significant and that helped me in figuring out if the Lord is leading us to each other. So... For me as a follower of Jesus Christ, that is important um, that, or it was important to me as a single that if ever I will have a future husband that I could pray with him and that we can do devotions together. And so um, I did challenge Jason a few weeks earlier uh, if he could maybe look for some kind of devotional we could do together. And so he didn't mention it again and uh, for a while. And I was wondering if he forgot or <laughs> what happened to it. And then, yeah, on that first day of 2020, he suggested um, a devotional. Like he messaged me as he was already back home again. And um, there's like a new version, Bible app, um, this kind of uh, reading through the Bible in one year devotional and um, he suggested that we would do that one and at first I was like wow that's a big commitment for the whole year to, to read the Bible um, but um, at the same time I was so happy um, that he remembered that he looked for something and I was like wow um, he could spiritually be the leader in, in our relationship in the future and and that's something I was looking for. So I was so glad and said, yes, let's do that one. And it was a confirmation for me that, um, yeah, that God had really brought us to each other. So I was sure that was the significant moment where I was sure and I was like, yes, um, I want to um, go further or pursue that relationship more hmm. but even though I was sure that time already <laughs> I wanted him to still come again and uh, be the one to ask me where we are at um, which was confusing for him as he thought the ball was in my court <laughs> so anyways I waited I wanted him to take initiative and he did um, and checked with me again on January 12th, right? I think so. Yeah, so. This time it wasn't as nerve wracking for me though because I'd already kind of knew where it was going maybe, or at least a better idea. 
Um, but it was still, I still needed a push from my friend. So we went on our first uh, official date on January 17, 2020. <laughs> then two months later, pa the pandemic started. Uh, Agnes went home to Germany as she had planned a home assignment anyways. And I, well, I stayed here for a few more weeks uh, before deciding to go back to Canada myself. Thus began a long distance relationship for us which felt like four years. But it was actually only four months. It still felt long. Right. <laughs> but things changed during this time. For the better. I mean, for the good. <laughs> the blessing within the pandemic for us and the restrictions that came with it, it gave us a lot of face time for us to chat and get to know each other very well. We FaceTimed every chance we got, uh, and we both felt things were made clear to us that God brought us together. So we originally were thinking to maybe do a wedding in the Philippines sometime in 2021. But as Jason mentioned, um, we talked a lot and you know, there, there comes a moment where when you know, you know, and then there's no need to prolong things unnecessarily. And that was the case for us. We uh, figured out through those video call times that, yeah, God really had brought us together and we wanted to um, move forward. And so we considered different options about a possible wedding, like where would we do it, maybe in Germany. Uh, when would we do it? Maybe in November of 2020 or even earlier. And uh, so, well, it all kind of depended on uh, our home countries and the borders uh, to open up as both countries, Canada and Germany, didn't allow for other nationalities to come in yet. So we prayed a lot for borders to open. We checked the websites every day. Um, for one of our countries to open up and finally, um, yeah, after those four months of a <laughs> long distance relationship, at the end of June 2020, the EU opened their borders for only eight countries worldwide to be able to, to come into the EU. And Canada was one of them. Woo! <laughs> It was funny because these eight countries, they seemed so random. I don't remember all of them, but um, yeah, there was, I think, even one country I've never heard of and like a country like Uruguay. It's like, it's so, it was really a random list, but I didn't care as long as Canada was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was another confirmation from God that he really... Uh, wanted us to uh, pursue this relationship and we felt so blessed um, by the Lord and like what he was doing and it was it such a God story how he uh, made it possible for Jason to come. Landing in Frankfurt on uh, July 15th, I met her mom later that evening after we got back from the airport. And on the 16th, I asked for her blessing before putting into action my plan. I had cooked up with Agnes's cousin to make a great day to propose on the 17th. Going for brunch at one of her favorite restaurants. After brunch, we went for a walk up to an old castle for me, this was my chance to scope it out as I wanted to propose there. We then ended up at a cafe where we had a coffee and cake and some great conversation. As evening approached, we went for dinner at the Mexican place she loved. My plan was to drop my fork or my shoes are untied and get down on one knee to throw her off. But yet again, I was too nervous and didn't even really think about that uh, until later that evening. But we went back up the hill to the castle to get some photos 
during sunset. I knew it was not just photos. <laughs> But it was such a fun day. It felt a little bit like the blind is leading the deaf. So we did all these amazing things in my hometown called Bielefeld. So I knew all the places, but he didn't know the places. I didn't know the plans, but he had the plans. So it was just funny. <laughs> but Jason did an amazing job and it was such a great day. I knew it pretty much from the start on that day that <laughs> he is planning to propose, which was totally fine. I was so excited and I enjoyed the day to its fullest. And then at the end of the day, he really did it. He went on his knee and he said the words, will you marry me? And I said, yes, of course. We set the date for September 18 and started to plan our wedding. And um, that only gave us eight weeks, actually. But those two months, uh, we just saw God's hand every step of the way in so many amazing ways. There's so many God stories to share. So... Here, just a few highlights um, of like how the Lord blessed us. One thing, for example, was that um, it was during pandemic, but we were able to have 150 guests. Well, it included the helpers, um, but still 150 people were allowed to come together to celebrate this union. It was amazing. My family was able to come out and celebrate with us, and they didn't even have to quarantine in Germany first. They didn't have to quarantine when they went back to Canada, but they were able to come for a week and to celebrate with us and to really just uh, enjoy their time in Germany as well. My mom said that uh, two weeks after they got home, when they finished their quarantine, she checked online on that website that Agnes mentioned earlier, and now, all of the countries were removed from that list and nobody was allowed to travel to the EU anymore. And then, yeah, it's just a small thing, but Jason usually feels warm wherever we are and I feel usually like more cold. But on our wedding day, the weather was just perfect and just right for us. Um, it was a sunny, a beautiful day. He wasn't sweating too much, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't feel cold. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just so wonderful. A gift from God, too. We also ran into some problems with our paperwork applying for our marriage license um, in Germany. But God helped us find a workaround uh, for that in Denmark for the civil wedding. This is just the snippets of what, uh, of, of the story that God has given us. We hope you enjoyed our love story. Our goal with these videos, with this series, is to give God glory for working and bringing us together. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you sooner than later next time. Bye!